Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you're all doing well. Yesterday I was surfing on the internet, what do I see? Our boy, Ken and Yildiz went totally viral, all over the place. Not for a dribble, not for a goal, but for something particular, actually looks like internet is telling me he has a new girlfriend. And who is the new girlfriend? You will all know her, Madison Beer. True, not true, what is real, what is fake, we'll speak about that later in today's video but of course tomorrow there is something important Juve Empoli and I'm not here to tell you how important the game is it will be again a sold out the people that will travel to the Allianz Stadium they already understood it and you already know we Juventini we are all aware of the importance of Juve Empoli today's video will speak a bit about the game giving you the latest update but really deep dive in it I prefer to wait the words of Max Allegri later today in press conference so expect the second video today but today I want to speak about two, three different topics. Federico Chiesa. I want to speak about Juve senza età or Juve per tutte le età, a Juventus for all ages, which is incredibly important. And then if we have time towards the end, I want to speak about Seferin, president of UEFA, that is losing more and more and more his friends. And these kind of news, if we are anticipating it so early, well, they are important to understand what the future of football can look like in the future. If you didn't yet, please, maximum of like, continue to subscribe to the channel. You are doing a fantastic job. It costs you zero and I think that you understand it now that it costs zero but it's helping me so much so thank you for that. We start with the news Madison Beer and Kenan Yildiz. Yesterday I saw a Turkish outlet that was writing it breaking Turkish player Kenan Yildiz is reportedly dating with Madison Beer. When I saw that news I was smiling I was saying mamma mia after Dusan Vlaovic we have a new player that is falling in love a new player that probably love is bringing him there in the clouds in the air everything is beautiful everything is fantastic and probably you know dating Madison Beer well it reflects on the pitch because since two months that's what they are saying since two months they are dating well since two months is actually where we started to see Kenan Yildiz I was smiling was happy and then I said before reporting the news before making a video or putting in the telegram group wait a bit tranquilly I need to understand the origin of the news. So I started to investigate a bit and I understood that it was a guy that probably had not a lot of things to do in his life, Massimo, that wrote, Today, Juventus Turkish player Kenan Yildiz, 18 years old, was playing games on Twitch with American model Madison Beer, 24 years old. Until there, there is no problem. You see, indeed, a beautiful Kenan Yildiz and a beautiful Madison Beer up and down that are playing together without audio. They have a nice conversation. They are smiling, etc., etc. Apparently, they are dating since two months and the news is even pushed that far that tomorrow during Juve Empoli Madison Beer will be there to support Kenan Yildiz beautiful eh? everything fantastic until the moment that you realize that it's a total fake news it doesn't exist at all 0.0% the guy he had probably nothing to do he wanted to make a joke maybe not understanding or maybe he knew already that that news would have gone totally viral guys the good news is we are speaking about Kenan Yildiz and you see that the guy is doing fantastically well. Not only in the Juve world, but also the other people that are not supporting Juve. They start to have their eye on Kenan Yildiz. And this is because of the fact that he's doing extremely well. The minimal news on Kenan starts to be viral. That means that we are lucky because when a player of 18 is going viral, that means he's doing extremely well. On the other side, well, it went viral because it's a crazy news that is totally invented. And we are living in a world that is starting even to implement AI, artificial intelligence, pay attention. That's what I wanted to tell you. I started the channel for multiple reasons. One of them was to fight against these fake news. Pay attention. We are living in a world full of information, a lot, quantities that are reaching peaks. Unfortunately, the quality of information is decreasing more and more and more. We are swimming in a world of fake news. So before jumping, wait a bit. That's important. Now we speak about the field, about calcio, tutto sport. Juve per tutte le età, Juventus for all ages, where you see four players there. Felipe Anderson from Lazio, Thiago Giallo from Juventus now, officially. We see Adzic, a new player next season. And then you see Francisco Barrido, that is 14 years old, a Juve from all ages. From the first one that is 30 years old or 
yeah, 30 years old, Felipe Anderson to 14 years old. Yesterday we saw the press conference of uh, Thiago Jalot. I spoke about it, about the maturity, about the self-awareness, about the fact that he's ready. And that's a beautiful thing that we were not even expecting that he was that ready already immediately. Good, if you didn't yet, please watch the video of yesterday. So a Juventus is going with a 23 years old because he's still young, Thiago Jalot. On top of that, yesterday we already anticipated that Juventus was about to sign a 14 years old player that is Francisco Barido, a new talent. Boca Junior is in total depression because they are losing one of their jewels that probably they could have sold for so much money in two, three years. Well, Juventus is already anticipating familiar motif because the family wants to leave for work motif to Torino and that's where he will sign so good news for Juve and some people will tell me Beppe why are we losing time to speak about the 14 years old tranquilli mamma mia we need a midfielder today we need some people that are reinforcing the team now today we were speaking about Anderson about uh, so many players Calvin Phillips we were speaking about Cope Manor and now we are speaking losing time with a 14 years old why are we losing time now I have to say ragazzi luckily we are able to anticipate this news. Do you remember how we anticipated Mattia Sule? Do you remember how we anticipated Ken and Yildiz? Players that were probably insignificant when we talk about them. Look at what they are doing today. And it's really relevant because in the tournée in America, when we saw Huysen, Ken and Yildiz, Nonje, we were all already aware about who these players were. A few years ago, we didn't know who they were. Now we know. And these players look at what they are doing today. So it's good to anticipate. But I also want to credit the work of the management. Because a lot of people will probably tell us, Hey, Juntoli, grande, fantastic work of Juntoli. Look at how Juventus worked internationally, especially in Argentina. Matias Soule is coming in January 2020 from Vélez in Argentina. Barrenecia Enzo is coming in January 2020, also the same year, a month later, from Newell's, also from Argentina. It's true that one year he was on loan to Sion in Switzerland, so already in Europe. But Juventus have a lot of people working around the world to spot these players. And they are doing it again. So a fantastic job from Juve to anticipate everyone, because these players, you have to be there on the spot. Because... There are not even that many videos online from the... So you need really the good contact. So congratulations to Juventus They're doing fantastically well. We already spoke about Adzic, you know, not only the future, future, future generation, but also Adzic, a player that Juventus was really great to sign. Why? Because we are taking him for free. He will sign his contract uh, next year when he will be 18, so for new season. But if we were not really fast, if we were not really ready already to go and to have the contact, well, probably he would have gone to other teams like Real Madrid, remember Hendrik, like City, that is going also with a lot of young players. How many of these teams are going with young talents and they are already being able to spend a lot of money for them. So great work for Juventus. And then we arrive to another player, that is Felipe Anderson, that could join Juve next season. Why? Because the discussion, they restarted with Lazio, and for the second time they stopped, he will probably not sign the extension with Lazio, which means that at the end of the season he will be totally free. I already gave you my green line here on the channel, and I already explained you why. But it's true that if Juventus today, we have already a lot of young players, and we are extremely proud about them, well, we can't have a baby Juve only baby you because this is not working in international scene especially because next year we will again play that champions league maybe if we are lucky depending on the result of napoli that first world cup for clubs in usa at the end of 2025 well, mid 2025 we need some players in quantity this time to also give some experience to the young players that are there and felipe anderson for free i can guarantee you that it's really beautiful signing a player that is not considered a starter but a player that can be really relevant for Juve so I understand that you have different strategy players that are for free that are not costing you a lot not really excessive salary with a lot of experience that understand the league that understand how the world is working that already know different roles versatile players can play on the right on the left offensively offensive midfield they can do a lot of things them adding them with the young players that we have that are growing is actually a really beautiful strategy. So for me, Felipe Anderson makes totally sense. Of course, we can't keep 
all of our players. And if we want to go for a name like Coop Manners between 40, 45 million euro, we have to sacrifice some players because not all of them will be able to find a spot at Juventus. And one of the names that we were talking about since yesterday is Matthias Soule, that a lot of you and including myself, would love to see back at Juve, could be a name that can be sacrificed to other leagues. Yesterday, the latest rumors were saying that Al Ittihad, a club from Saudi Arabia, was already ready with a verbal offer, but ready to send a written offer to Juventus for an amount of 30 million euro. And they are also ready already to increase that offer. And we are speaking about one of the richest clubs of Saudi Arabia. They can even increase if they really want Soule. They also have a long-term contract for the Argentinian player with a lot of money. What would Juventus do? What need Juventus to do? Well, we know it. We need to sacrifice at a certain moment some players. If we want to go big on the market, reinforcing ourselves with experienced, strong players, especially in the midfield, but also left-back, right-back, we have to pay attention to what we are doing and some names, uh, unfortunately, they will go. Maybe a Soule, maybe a Lenin Jr. So accepting 30 million euro, 40 million euro for Soule is an option that is realistic. On the other side, Soule to Ali Tiat, the rumors are saying the first time he said already no. They will probably recontact him with, maybe with another offer. I hope sincerely, wherever he goes, huh, Soule, that he's not going to Saudi Arabia. With all the respect for the project that they are starting to buy or to work on, I think that he needs to finish it here at Fortinone. And then or he comes back to Juve or maybe he upgrades himself in another league or maybe in Serie A, a bigger team or maybe to Premier League or whatever because I really believe in the potential of the kit. And I would be sad to lose a bit this track because Saudi Arabia will maybe become one of the top leagues in the world in the future. But these young players, I believe that they can give still a lot to European football before starting to look at the big money. Anyway, that's my thought about Soleil. So I'm happy that the first answer is no let's see what will happen there Gazeta dello Sport is speaking about Dusan Vlaovic again we know it Gazeta dello Sport is the first sponsor of our 23 years old Serbian player and they are writing Buon anno Vlaovic good year Vlaovic double page interview or not interview but article about him saying it is the year of Dusan Vlaovic uh, one goal every hour he never started that well he's doing even better than the beginning of the years when he was at Fiorentina I'm super happy eh, when Gazzetta dello Sport is speaking that well about Dusan because that means the consequence that Juventus is doing well I'm super happy for the guy that received a lot of criticism in the beginning of the season hopefully he can continue to do like that on the other side on the right side of the page you see that Federico Chiesa is having a difficult start of the year now tomorrow if Federico will be there or not we will listen to the words of Max Allegri one that will be there is Timothy Wea. the only question mark is we don't know if he will start or not because at the moment there are two different options or we have a midfield with Miretti in the midfield together with Locatelli and McKenney. That means that Cambiaso will play on the right, Kostic will play on the left, or we go with the alternative that is Cambiaso as a midfielder with Locatelli and McKenney, with way out from the start on the right side. And I hope that we go towards that second option. For what reason? Because tomorrow, for the very, very first time, there will be not one, but there will be two Wea in the stadium. One that will wear the shirt of Juve because it's Timothy and then Papa Wea, Georges Wea, icon of Milan that will be there to support his team for the very first time, his team Juventus, but also especially his son Timothy Wea. So I'm super happy. So hopefully we can see Timothy Wea doing well, shining in front of the eyes of his father and who knows, maybe scoring his first goal in Serie A. He already did in Coppa Italia. If he can do it tomorrow, would be extremely beautiful. Corriere dello Sport is speaking about Max Allegri and Simone Inzaghi saying the game it's actually Max that is leading it why because they are referring that we are playing one day before Inter and if we win tomorrow we go temporarily at plus four there is a news that made me extremely happy of course I don't understand that they took so long to understand it but apparently they are thinking in Italy about the possibility to ask all the clubs to insert the facial recognition, the technology that Juventus already has without being requested to, to all the other teams. And that it could be a rule if you want to subscribe and to participate to Serie A. Which was reason to be able to identify all the players that are doing things that you can't do in the stadium. Races, chance, yes, priority, but also other behavior that are absolutely not acceptable. 
luckily i have to say finally finally we are arriving to someone and to something sorry that juventus already anticipated so much time ago and then i want to touch about seferin because yesterday we heard that zvonimir boban ex Milan icon that was working actually at UEFA in a really important role well he's giving up he's resigning from the UEFA role for what reason because he said I'm not in line anymore with Seferin methodology big words huh, of uh, Zvonimir Boban what is actually referring to to the fact that Seferin that always fought against multiple election of the same presidency because he wanted an alternative now that he's president and has already been elected for a second time he wants to change the rule making sure that he can again be elected for a third consecutive time until 2027 whereas Vladimir Boban is saying and eh, no this is not working because what he was fighting for he's now just changing it making it looking like a dictator he's omnipotent he has all the powers and these are things that I'm absolutely not in line with what was the answer of Seferin he said I don't need to answer him he doesn't even deserve my reply my time I already heard these kind of sentences from Seferin do you remember when he was attacking Andrea Agnelli eh, from the moment that you are going against Seferin or he's insulting you or he's going with an ego from there on the top of the world saying I don't lose time you don't deserve my answer so pay attention Seferin it's not only Zvodimir Boban that is against him but also yesterday in press conference Pep Josep Guardiola coach of Manchester City he said he knows we have the right to defend ourselves I will come back on that center what did he say in entirety he said Look, regarding the statements of Seferin about Manchester City, he needs to re respect the procedures. He is a lawyer and president of UEFA. He has a lot of work to do on UEFA, so better for him to take care of that one. He should wait for justice and the right to defend. Then, from that moment on, he can do whatever he thinks is appropriated. Important words. Holy words. For what reason? Because he's saying something that is important. I don't know the charges against Manchester City. I don't know if they are right, if they are wrong. I don't know what they did. I have already enough problems with Juve to take care of. So I don't know about Manchester City. But if there is one thing that is true, justice said, we will plan the court. You have time to defend yourself. And after that, there will be an official punishment or no, or you will be free, whatever. This is something that has not been given to Juventus. And I'm happy that in UK they are speaking about it. It goes on front pages and from that moment on it disappeared and nobody is speaking about it anymore. Because you are respecting all the steps, the procedures, without putting Manchester City or whatever club as you are guilty, without having the chance to speak, to defend yourself. A right that has been denied for Juve with the complicity of Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio. We were taking immediately the 15 points. We had to wait. We had no chance to defend ourselves. The same thing that has happened in Europe where we were there and you remember the Gazzetta dello Sport big titles. UEFA is potentially thinking about taking away from European competition Juventus for even more years. If you go and Google, you can even fi find that there was being about five years exclusion to European uh, competition, where Juventus at a certain moment said, we couldn't defend ourselves. We were obliged to go for a plea deal. Why is Manchester City able to defend themselves and not Juventus? They will tell me, hey, Manchester City is stronger than Juve as a club. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But the real reason is that you have a support of respecting the rule from England, where in Italy, Federazione Italiana Gioco Calcio, they actually took side from Juventus. They didn't defend their club while they were supporting UEFA. And that's a really thing that we don't have to forget, that we don't have to omit when we are speaking bad about our team in the difficult moment that we are, that we can't go on the transfer market, that we are not thinking at instant immediately but we are working with youth from the future why are we not a top club why can't we compete with a big club from Europe? you know there is a big difference in how Juventus has been treated never forget that that's an important one anyway long video also today with a lot of topics you will see probably my face again later today in a second video speak about Massimiliano Allegri press conference grazie forza you bet